Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Javon from Healthy Vegan Eating. He was referred to me by my dear friend in Columbia, Maryland, Cheryl McRae, who's a PCRM cooking instructor, and she thinks he is amazing. She's had him on her show many times. He's going to be demonstrating a veggie ground round and showing us three different ways we can use it. Please welcome him to the show. Any friend of Sharon's is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Thank you. Thank you. So nice to be here. How did she find you? Just like on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. She said that she was uh, getting her house remodeled in a hotel and and she was looking through some recipe sites and saw me and fell in love with the sauces because they allowed her to take regular dishes and make them taste gourmet. That's her word. Um, and so, yeah, so she found me on Instagram. Well, speaking of remodeled kitchens, I mean, not that yours is remodeled. It's a beautiful kitchen. I love the cabinets. I love the backsplash. It's beautiful. Yeah, it looks Thank really you. good. So mm -hmm. tell me your story, Javon. Uh, when did you start eating this way and why? Well, um, unfortunately, um, I started eating this way because I had some health issues. Um, you know, I grew up eating a standard American diet, like most people, had no idea what healthy food was. I know you're supposed to eat your fruits and vegetables, and I didn't do much of that. Uh, but then when I got older, I started running into some issues. And um, I was pre-diabetic, pre-hypertensive, um, had some other serious things potentially going on. And so it just was the catalyst for me to say, look, I got to figure something out. So I started looking online, started buying some books. Uh, long story short, I eventually got to Dr. Furman. His thing, you know, his work really resonated with me. And so I started to employ some of his methods and they work. And the more it worked, the happier I got, the more excited I got. My body composition changed, my energy changed, everything changed. People noticed it. They asked me what happened. I told them and they said, you should tell everybody this. And I had to figure out a way to do that. Many years later, social media was, was the outlet and that's what I'm doing. That's great. Well, you look very fit and very healthy. How did you hear about Dr. Furman? Like just some, you, you Googled this or you had heard of him or heard of his books? Yeah. You know, I don't even remember how I, how I came upon him initially, but I'm sure it was online. So, you know, I was, you know, I was doing Dr. Mercola and Dr. Greger and Dr. McDougal and RD, Brenda. I mean, I went through all kinds of people. Uh, when I got to him though, it was a kind of a stop moment. It was like, whoa, wait a minute. Now there's a little something different about this guy. And uh, so, but I'm sure that it was on social media, I assume on YouTube that I uh, first found him. Then I bought all of his books, read all of his books, watch all of his uh, interviews. So, yeah. Nice. Well, he, he, he comes on my show about four times a year and I do appreciate his work so much. So many people, uh, got their no. start, you know, watching him on PBS or reading his books. So that's fantastic. So is this your first, when you started your YouTube channel, was that your first time doing these kind of cooking demonstrations? Yeah, well, you know, I initially started on Instagram doing the short form, uh, and I started not quite a year ago. June 21st will be one year that I've been on social media, and the Instagram thing, I didn't know how it would go, but it really took off, and um, and it and it grew really quickly, um, and so then on YouTube, I was kind of posting here and there short form, but everybody was saying, you ought to have a cooking show. You ought to have a cooking show, and so I said, all right, well, let me do a cooking show, and so um, about two months ago, I started doing long-form step-by-step recipes on YouTube, and that's going really well also. But initially, it was the short form stuff uh, on Instagram. That's fantastic. I love it. Had you, before you started eating this way, were you much of a cook or a chef? No, no, not at all. I still don't consider myself to be much of a cook or a chef, really. Um, you know, I, I just kind of figure things out, right? I, I, I don't have all this knowledge, and I'm applying it and just making beautiful dishes. I'm saying, I want to make this. How will I go about it? And then I experiment and I and I do it, you know. So um, I don't have a culinary background. I did get certified as a nutritarian cook and coach uh, through Dr. Furman's program. Uh, but most of what I do is just driven by trial, error, and passion. You know, I just really want to make a dish, really want to share. And so I just figure it out. And then when I do, I perfect it. And there it is. I love it. Sounds like there might be a cookbook in your future. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of people asking about that. Um, I'm going to be doing an app. Uh, coming out sometime, you know, probably September or so. Uh, and that app will have all my recipes plus some extras and you'll be able to print out the recipes and grocery lists and that kind of thing. So it's kind of my answer in the immediate to a cookbook, which, you know, they can take, I'm sure, you know, take a long time oh, um, to come to fruition. So, yeah. No matter so, how fast you do it, it's another year just till when you hear her turn your manuscript in. So I get it. I yeah, get it. I found that out. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So you, 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 you feel so much better eating this way than you did before. Oh man, night and day. And I always tell people a little saying of mine is you don't know how good it, it feels to feel good until you feel good. And so by that, I mean, you know, when I was eating the standard American diet, um, I still had energy and I played sports. So I thought I was doing okay. I thought that was my baseline. So I was like, oh yeah, I feel like everybody else. I feel fine. But once I changed the way I eat and really started feeling that energy and, and that drive, you know, because when you, when you get your body fine tuned, or at least for me, you want to do things. You want to be active. You want to move. And I do. I exercise a lot. But my goodness, the, the difference between then and now was just night and day. Uh, but I didn't know back then that there was another level. But now I'm there. And yes, absolutely. I feel so much better now. It's almost like people don't know how bad they felt until they feel good. And that's a good way to put it. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. a very good way to put it. Absolutely. So veggie crumbles, you know, when you get the ones in the store, they're, they're very high in fat, oils, fake meats. Yours are made from whole food ingredients. That is correct. In fact, that's what I was going to say to people. You know, uh, that's why I don't buy the store-bought um, veggie meat. Um, I decided to make veggie ground and believe it or not, it's made with superfoods. And that's what I have here in front of me. Um, I've already made some, but I just wanted to show the components of the dish. And, you know, I got some portobello mushrooms here. I got some fresh garlic, some carrots. I've got red onion. I've got uh, cauliflower, walnuts, and then some tomato paste. So this is the base of the recipe. The only other thing that's added is some seasoning. So, you know, um, and, you know, a lot of people would be skeptical, Chef AJ, and look at this and go, wait a minute, that's not going to be a ground beef replacer. What are you kidding me, man? This can't be good. But I'm telling you, it, this particular recipe doesn't have the most views on my social media, but it is the most popular and the most practical. When people make this, they sing about it. You know, they just love it. And it makes so much. So you can make it and freeze it and break it out and make burritos and tacos and lasagna. So it's just so versatile. Uh, but the basis of the of the recipe, as you see here, is superfoods. And that's a wonderful thing. That's so cool. That's great that you can freeze it. And it sounds really versatile. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. So are you going to show how to make it or? Absolutely. Now, well, I'm going to tell you how to make it. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like made. So this is the components of it. Now, to, to make this, you have to process all these things individually. And it takes some time because you got to pulse as not to over um, 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 process your cauliflower. You got to pulse things. Now, I have this step by step uh, on my YouTube if someone wanted to see how to make this step by step. Uh, but, to, you know, just to be um, uh, convenient here, I, I wanted to show you what goes into it. But I'm not going to sit that aside and show you the finished result. And this is what it looks like. And um, all I did with those veggies that I just showed you is um, I put them in a the processor. As I said, I processed them one by one, pulled them out, then mixed them all together, put them in a the skillet, and then no oil added, obviously. And then you just put it in there. The, ve the veggies exude a lot of water. And you just really mind it. And you just turn it and turn it. Eventually, they brown. You add your seasonings. And that this is the finished result of, of the veggie ground. It actually looks and As you can see, let me show you that again. It makes a lot. That's a lot of veggie ground. And it really does look like ground beef. It's been so long that I've seen ground beef, but it really surprisingly looks, I think the mushrooms may, might make it look that way. Absolutely. The mushrooms, the portobellos are what gives it that nice color. And then, um, you, you know, you add the tomato paste in with some walnuts and that helps too to create that color. But it, you know, not that it needs to look like the other thing, but for people who are trying to transition away from meat, the visuals matter and something like this uh, could really be a good bridge recipe for them to get away from all the meat and all the other crap. And, and thank you for giving the recipe for the show notes. And I love that you gave a nut free version because Kathy, who watches the show regularly, is allergic to all nuts. So this is going to be great because she always says, what do you do if you're allergic to nuts? You've given us the option. Absolutely. And you and listen, I hear that all the time on my page. Do you have a nut free version of pretty much anything I make? Um, so I do try to do that when it's practical. And then also I have a mushroom free version that I offer too, because some people don't, you know, don't want to eat mushrooms. And so I just try to make it as adaptable as I can. So, um, so I do have three different recipes for this one dish. That's great. That's great. You know, we, when we talked about how you started feeling better eating this way, you didn't mention you also lost quite a bit of weight. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was about 80 pounds heavier than I am now, 80, 90 pounds heavier than I am now. And that's, that's, that's gone. And that's good. That's, that's a incredible. Really good thing. Do you have any before and afters on any of your social media pages? 
I, I, I do. Only on my very first video on Instagram that I posted, I, my first video was my backstory kind of thing and why I love healthy vegan eating. And in that, I showed a before picture and I showed an after picture with my shirt off and all this stuff so you could really see the drastic difference. And uh, yeah, 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 big difference. And you know all about that because I, I watched your story and um, yeah. man, you went from being heavy to being, you know, so yeah. You I know. Know that. Isn't, that fun isn't it funner though this way? <laughs> yeah, it's much funner, much funner. Much funner. Yeah. You, you know, you had said you, it, well, you didn't say it here, but you, you put in the show notes that you were going to be a dietitian at one point. Yes, that was so. So again, people were telling me, hey, you ought to go on social media, man. You're really passionate about helping people change the way they eat and get healthy. But, but believe it or not, Chef AJ, I wasn't on social media at all. I didn't even have Facebook. I mean, I did, but I was never on it. I had maybe three friends. I, it was private. I never did anything with it. So I was really, really adamant that I'm not going on social media, but I did want to share health. So I said, well, let me go back to school and be a, a dietitian and a plant-based dietitian. I can help people that way. And I went to school for a couple of years. And man, when I started taking my nutrition courses and saw the things that they were promoting, I was like, I can't do this in good conscience. I mean, I can't, I can't promote this. And if I'm working uh, you know, for a particular hospital or for, for a particular entity that tells me I have to promote this, I'm going to be out of a job. So I was like, this is not going to work. So after a couple of years, I left. And that was kind of the thing that, you know, it kept coming back to me, social media, social media, social media, you know, I was like, no, no, I'm going to find another way, social media, social media. So finally, I was like, okay, all right. And so it was kind of like I gave in and said, let me try this. And uh, boy, I'm glad I did, because I think I'm going to reach more people this way um, than I than I would had I been a dietitian. I mean, my following is, uh, you know, about 450,000 right now, somewhere close to that. Um, so um, yeah, I think I made the made the right choice. Yeah, that's incredible. I that's that you know, I noticed behind you some books, and it seems like is that Kathy Fisher's book by any chance? It almost looks like it to me. Um, which would you talking about the books here? Yeah, is that is that straight up food? You, you Oh no no no! That's uh, the flavor bible. No no. Those okay, are, the I, no. It's just okay. So that's the flavor bible. It's just I think I have that book because it looked familiar to me. The one on the right. Yeah yeah. That the one on the right is the science of spice. Okay, that's or what I, I guess the, I, I think this is your right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Science of spice. Okay, it just mm -hmm. the cover looked yeah. like something I have on my bookshelf. Nice. Did you do a mm -hmm. lot? Of, did you mm -hmm. read a lot of books when you started making your transition? Absolutely. I mean, well, I've read all of Dr. Furman's. I think he has 17 books, either 14 or 17 books. Oh. I have all of his. I have Dr. Gregor's book, McDougal. I read, um, you know, The Pleasure Trap. I mean, I could name them all. I read, you know, that's the, and that's another thing, too, is that I tell people my journey was not linear, right? I, I, I was all over the place. I tried paleo at one time. Um, I tried the keto and I tried a lot of things and I'm glad I did. They didn't work for me and I don't recommend them personally, but I'm glad I did because it gave me the knowledge of how those things work and why where I am now is better because I have the luxury of comparison. If I just came straight to where I am, someone might make me doubt where I am and say, hey, well, you should try this or try that. And I wouldn't know from experience, but having tried those things and, and don't get me wrong, they got results initially, the weight loss, but you can lose weight doing all kinds of crazy things. But is it healthy? Is it sustainable? Um, and so, but yes, to answer your question directly, um, I read a lot of books, a ton of books. And I'm going to get, um, I didn't know that um, Brenda Davis had a new book until I saw your show the other day. So nice. You interviewed all my favorite people and I saw her and I'm about the protein. So I'm going to, I'm going to be grabbing that book within the next couple of days for sure. Nice. Yeah. You, so that's fantastic. I've read a lot of Dr. Furman's books, but I got to be honest, I haven't read all of them. Which one is your personal favorite? Uh, probably it will super immunity and eat for life for probably my, probably my favorites, super immunity and eat for life, eat for life is his most recent book. Um, and then super immunity, uh, that's a few books back, but, but those, those two are my favorite, but I love them all. I, I literally love them all. So my two favorite are disease proof, your child and fast food genocide. Mm. Yes, those are good. Fast food genocide is very good. It didn't do as well as his other books. Um, but man, does it have a lot of information in it. And I like that it kind of touches on, you know, some of the other components about how, how diet is viewed and et cetera. So I really like that one. And disease, disease proof your child is one that I like. And I actually give that if someone's telling me they're expecting a child, that's usually a gift that I'll give them. It's one of the gifts that I'll give them is disease proof your child. So I like that book too. Nice. So 
when you freeze your crumbles, do you, you obviously let it cool first. So you just like put it in a Ziploc bag, a Tupperware container. How do you freeze it? Do you freeze it in like little portions? Yeah, well, I, you know, I use glass for everything. I try not to use any plastic. Um, so, you know, I use glass Tupperware, uh, much like this bowl, uh, but smaller. I don't have one in front of me, but a smaller version of this that has a lid. And so I just, um, I just, now, now, whenever I'm making it, it makes probably for me about five to seven servings, five to seven dishes that I can make with it. So I'll make the initial dish. I'll put enough in the fridge where, okay, so if I made uh, veggie burgers a day, then I might make tacos and I might make whatever. So I'll put a little bit in the fridge and then freeze about three to four <clears throat> uh, dishes worth of food portions in the freezer in glass Tupperware. That makes sense. That makes sense. What's your favorite way to use it? Ooh, wow. That's tough. Um, you know, I love a, ugh, I love a good veggie lasagna. Um, so I, I really like, and I have that on my, on my IG, but I really like making veggie lasagna. So that's definitely one of my favorite ways. And then one of the things I'm doing today is simple as you get just a lettuce wrap, you know, just spicing it up really nicely. Today, I'm going to do a taco lettuce wrap. So I'll just season it up nice and put it on a, a little less cause that's another thing, Chef AJ, is that I don't eat, a, <laughs> it sounds weird, but I don't eat a lot of the things that I post on IG. Like I don't eat any bread. Um, unless I make it as a, you know, to make a recipe on IG, then I'll eat it instead of throwing it away. And I don't eat salt and I don't eat oil and I don't eat refined wheat um, and I don't eat rice and I don't eat sugar, you know. So I don't eat a lot of the things that I make, but I always want to be mindful that there are people out there who will never make the transition and even get healthier. If not healthy, yes. I mean, every, no one will, not everyone will eat on your level or my level or this level. We're not looking for perfection, but I try to make what I call these gateway recipes that still aren't quite where I am or where you are or maybe where someone wants to be. But it's a good little step, you know, to, to make some progress and build on that and make that other step and make that other step until you get to where you want to be. Yeah. So you don't eat, uh, we, we pretty much eat the same. I don't eat weed. I don't eat oil or salt or sugar. But how come no rice? Not even like black rice or red rice, just zero rice? Well, I, I'm, I'm pretty much in, in lockstep with, with Dr. Furman on this in that, you know, white rice, you know, every, the good stuff's been removed. You take out the bran, you take out the fiber, you take out the germ, you're left with just the endosperm, and it's high glycemic with no nutrients. And that's like the opposite of what you want to do if you're nutritarian. And you're looking for uh, low to moderate in calories and high in micronutrients. And rice is the epitome. Of, it's the polar opposite of that. And then the issue with brown rice and dark rices in general is that rice tends to absorb uh, more arsenic out of the soil and the water that is grown in than other plants if you put it in the same water. And so brown rice has the, you know, the nutrients, but the problem is it can be high in arsenic. Same thing with red and black. And I'm, again, I'm aligned with Dr. Furman. If you can find a source for rice and you know the water's pristine, or at least it doesn't have high levels of, of, um, of arsenic, okay, go for it. But for me, rather than look for that particular rice or that particular source, why not just eat some quinoa? You know, why not just eat some millet, you know, and they have arsenic too, but at a much lower level than the brown rice. So those are kind of my go-tos. And sometimes I'll do cauliflower rice and I just leave the, the rices alone. But I'm not, a pro, you know, again, if you, to each their own. And if that's, uh, that's what someone chooses to do, or they can find that rice that's low in arsenic, that's a nice, healthy grain. I know, but it tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. Agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I, I have no problem with the things. But I, but even even our friend Sharon, who basically avoids rice, will eat sometimes black rice or red rice. You know those kinds of like like Lundberg, for example. They that a California brand that's organic and tends to be lower in arsenic, things like that. And may I ask you, because this the audience always wants to know what everybody that comes on the show, even the people that are plant based, what they eat in a day. Are you able to share that? I am. I am. And it's crazy um, or to most people. It's not crazy to me. It's probably not crazy to you, but it sounds crazy to other people. But um, every day I eat a giant salad. Again, so it sounds like Dr. Furman. Um, literally about 35 ingredients in that salad. Um, so I try to eat 50 foods a day, 50 foods a day consistent of veggies, fruits, uh, you know, beans and legumes, mushrooms, nuts and seeds. And so my salad has about 35 ingredients in it. With that salad, I eat a small bowl of hummus with some mushrooms that I use some uh, coconut aminos to make into bacon, and I crumble them up and put them in the um, into my uh, hummus. The hummus is a three bean hummus. It has chickpeas. It has um, 
navy beans and it has pinto beans. Uh, then I eat black beans with a small bowl of quinoa. So I have the hummus, the quinoa with the small black beans. So that's four different beans, the hummus and the, um, and the quinoa. I eat a nori sheet uh, to get my iodine because uh, I don't supplement that. I, I just use a nori sheet, a couple of nori sheets a day. Uh, and I eat that big salad. And then for dessert, um, I eat a lot of fruit. I eat about five or six different berries um, along with cherries right now because they're organic and in season. Pomegranate when it's in season, kiwi. So um, that that's the and then in the morning I forgot I eat a bunch of nuts and seeds. So um, I, I eat a combination of walnuts, uh, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, um, some uh, amylo powder, some uh, black uh, black uh, uh, cumin, some black cumin seeds. So you know that that that's what I eat literally five days a week. And then I make my recipes that I'm going to post on Friday, and I'll eat those over the weekend. But I'll still have a salad with them. I'll have a small salad. Um, but that's 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 how I roll. I mean, you know, and if I weren't on IG, I would eat that seven days a week. A little bit of variation on the weekend. Um, but but yeah, that's that's what I eat daily. Pretty boring, but I, but I love it. It works for me. That you bring up an interesting point because pretty boring. If it's delicious, it's not boring. And also, if you're not looking for your food for the excitement, because I, I I eat maybe d little different items than you, but I, I've eaten the same thing for lunch for 12 years. And I and I and when I can't get it, like I'm traveling, I'm like I can't wait to get home and eat this again. Absolutely, and and please understand when I say it's boring, I'm saying that I I want to realize how some people might hear that and it sounds boring. But as Dr. Furman said, if you eat something long enough, your taste buds will recalibrate and you'll like those foods. You'll prefer those foods. And when you get rid of the salt, it livens your taste buds over time and you can taste the natural flavors of all these different foods that you're eating. So for me, it's not boring. I love it. I look forward to getting that salad every day. I look forward to that hummus. I look forward to that, to everything. The nori sheets, uh, not so exciting, but I, you know, it's kind of like a supplement just to me. But, uh, but no, I don't get bored with what I eat, but I know to most people eating the same thing over and over again, especially a big old salad, uh, does not sound um, interesting, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, you know, Andrew Taylor, who's been on the show says, make your food boring, make your life interesting. And think about it. No animals in nature have the kind of variety that, that these people seek. You know, they, our pets eat the same thing every day. See, I think that's, I well... I don't know. I don't know how you feel about food addiction, but I think that people that lean more towards that are looking more for stimulation and needing all these different varieties to, to feel satisfied. Well, I mean, and Dr. Furman talks about that too. I'm going to stop saying his name. I know I keep saying it, but he talks about that too, that a lot of these foods that are refined, like, like the wheats and the sugars, um, they create a dopamine response in your brain that's similar to cocaine or to narcotics. And so there is a pleasure sensory that's happening when you eat these foods. So addiction is a real thing. I tell anybody, you're addicted to sugar. And so was I. I'm not saying it in a you know condescending way. I was addicted to sugar. Anyone watching who doesn't believe that you're addicted to sugar, I got a challenge for you. Stop eating it. Stop eating it. Stop eating it. <laughs> I, I you're totally not going to stop eating it. Yeah, absolutely. I say that all the time absolutely. when people say, well, but, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with alcohol. Okay, well, then just stop drinking for a week and we'll see. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But but I say it with compassion. I want to make that clear, not dismissively. I say it with compassion. And that's what my page is all about, is showing you that you can get rid of the refined sugar and sweeten everything with dates. That's all I use. I sweeten everything with dates. And I make pies and cakes and cookies and sauces and all kinds of things. Dates, 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 dates. Whole dates, date paste, occasionally date syrup. And it gets the job done and you got all the nutrients and you got all the fiber and it doesn't, you know, spike your blood sugar, like refined sugar. So, you know, you're getting a healthy food and that's what you're sweetening things with. It's a win-win. So I'm not saying you can't have better sweet. I'm just saying it would be good to give up the sugar and use dates as your sweetener instead. That's what I mean. You know, it's going to be 20 years for me very soon of no, well, actually, wait a minute. Hello. Today is July 6th. It's 20 years today. Yeah. This is amazing. You're here on my my 20 year sugar free anniversary. And that's the dates are what did it. Oh, for. wow. Well, so, that's cool. I mean, so then that's perfect. That's a, you, have, you have the perfect guess because I consider myself the date man and I'm not even joking. And people even call me that sometimes just because of how much I use dates. So it's appropriate and maybe, you know, uh, you know, kind of karma that I'm here today uh, on your sugar free. Uh, I, I didn't even I didn't even think about that. And my my next book is is a dessert cookbook, and everything is sweetened with fruit, primarily dates. So yeah, we, we're kindred spirits with that. I'm guessing because your food's so good, you probably don't enjoy restaurant eating as much as maybe you used to. 
Yeah, yeah. And Sharon had asked me that question, and and um, and I don't, yeah, I I, I don't like to sound like a snob, you know what I mean? And and I and I don't feel like I'm being a snob, but I don't eat at restaurants. Like I don't like, I just don't. I, last time I ate at a restaurant was three years ago, and it was kind of out of necessity because of where I was. I didn't really have an option. But when I say I don't eat oil, I don't mean most of the time. I mean I don't eat oil. You know, when I say I don't eat ref refined wheat, I don't mean 364 days. Of, I mean all the time. When I don't eat right, I don't. I don't eat the things that I don't eat, and I don't miss them. And uh, and so going to a restaurant. Now listen, like I told you, invite me. I'll show up. You know, I'll drink some water and we can chat. I can I can offer the conversation, but I just don't budge on 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 that. You know, and and I'm happy with that. I don't feel deprived. I don't feel like I'm missing out. None of that after what eating this way has done for me, there's no greater gift that I could be given. And I'm not going to compromise that by just, you know, going to a restaurant. Oh, I'll have a little oil. I'll have a little of this. That's fine for people who want to do it. I'm not knocking it. But for me, no, I don't, I don't budge. Well, good, so, good unless it's you. a restaurant. That, that, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I love that you don't make exceptions. And I, like you, didn't go to restaurants, especially after I lost weight for like 10 years. But then an interesting thing happened. I moved from Southern California to Northern California, where there are six restaurants, four of them are, three of them are vegan, three of them are not vegan, that have vegan menus and SOS free menus. I didn't do this. The people before me did because they had heart disease and obesity and diabetes. And, and so now I could go and it's SOS free. And that's never been happening in my life. And it's like unbelievable that the restaurants do that for us. Well, I'll tell you, if I had that luxury, I would go. I mean, because my only reason that I don't eat at restaurants is because they don't serve what I eat. But if I had an SOS free near me, are you kidding me? Uh, that would be beautiful. I know. I'd it's, it, 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 week, I, you know? I, I can't believe it. And like, we'll have these meetups two or three times a month, like with 40 people. See, because I think what happened is the restaurants saw that there was some money in it and they were willing to do it, you know? So, I mean, what I'm trying to say for people watching, if this is something you enjoy eating at restaurants, don't give up, talk to them. It has been done. It, so it, it's possible if, if that's something you enjoy, but like you, you know, I find that, you know, when you, when I used to go and just not eat, you know, well, people, if other people get upset by that, they don't, they don't seem to like it when you're not indulging in the pleasure trap at the same time. Let me tell you, I know that all too well. And I think that the thing is, is that they feel judged. It's like, like, okay, you're not eating this. We're eating this. Well, why don't you eat it? Because whatever your reason is, and you're saying that we're wrong because you're saying it has this, this, and this. So you're not, you're above me. It's just not a, it's not, you know what I mean? And so I've been in that scenario many times. Um, and that's why I say, if you don't mind me not eating, I'll come and I'll give you great conversation. I won't criticize the same thing that you eat because it ain't none of my business. You eat what you want to eat. Um, but for me, it, it doesn't work. But but yes, I've, I've been in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the guests on the show that has the most views, actually, Dr. John Scharfenberg, who's almost 100, he lives near me and he'll come. He, he doesn't eat dinner. Like it's it's not that he won't eat at a restaurant, but he just he's a, a Seventh Day Adventist. And they often do a form of intermittent fasting where they just eat breakfast and lunch. So he'll come to our dinner meetups and just not eat. And, and nobody has a problem with him. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And that would be me. That would be, that would be me. Well, if you're yeah. ever in Northern California, I will invite you and you, but, but you'll be able to eat here. That's the, that's the cool thing about it. You know? So that's true. If it's SOS, well, well, then the other thing is I, I, I only eat organic too. So that might be a, a buzzkill. Um, yes, if I go in that, and, and the that, things aren't organic. True. So that's another so thing for me too. One of them yeah. is organic. I know for yeah. sure that one of the six I mentioned is 100% organic, but yeah, you're right. Well, good. I like when people stick to their guns and don't compromise there. Uh, it's, I think, I think the, yeah. it's harder for a lot of women. I'm not making a judgment on men and women, but at least the people I've worked with, the women, it's harder for them because they, they tend to want to be more people pleasing and they, they don't always stand up for themselves in those situations. I agree. And there are a lot of men like that too. And I get it. I get it. I mean, social pressure is a real thing. Um, you know, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to be the odd guy or girl out. So I, I, I totally get that, but I'm at a place of comfort where I can say, Hey, and you know, I let it be known ahead of time. It, people know how I eat anyway. I'm like, Hey, look, I'll come, but I, I'm not going to eat, but I can drink water and then I, and I can talk and we can talk and I have fun. They have fun. So, uh, <laughs> it works for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dr. Furman even talks about that, how a cheat meal can just, for some of the people that he works with, can completely derail their progress. 
Yeah, yeah, I've heard him talk about that on your show, in fact. And and he talks about that that weight that you put on, how one single meal can sabotage your weight loss. And you can put on three pounds, and to take that weight off is more difficult than it was to put it on. Uh, not not to mention yo yo yoing is is not good, right? Um, because usually when you re-put the weight on, it's more in the form of visceral fat and not just subcutaneous fat. Uh, and visceral fat is the fat that chokes your organs, and it's, it's, it's even worse than subcutaneous fat. And that's usually what you're putting on when you're going down and then back up in weight, down and then back up in weight. You start to put on more and more visceral fat. And, uh, you know, that, that's that's not good. Not good. Yeah, great. So show us how to use the faux uh, faux ground beef, if you will, a veggie ground. Okay, absolutely. Let's do it. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to make um, are some uh, pasta rolls, pasta roll ups, right? And so, um, and I'm going to make the filling for those first. And I'm going to do that by taking some of my veggie ground here. Okay, and um, to this, I am going to add uh, some lentils. Put a little more veggie ground. That ratio isn't what I want. There we go. Um, so I'm going to mix that up a little bit. And then to this, I'm going to add some chopped spinach that I've cooked. <clears throat> And I'm just going to mix this. <clears throat> and this is going to uh, make up the filling that I'm going to stuff my pasta with. So I'm just going to lick this up. Now, again, um, I don't eat salt. And so um, I'm not adding any salt to this. Uh, not to mention that the veggie ground is seasoned really well. You know, when, when you make the veggie ground, you're adding all kinds of spices. So it has a really nice flavor. Uh, but most people might want to add a little salt and even garlic to this. I'm not going to do that. I'm also going to add a little tomato sauce to this, by the way. And the tomato sauce also, um, also is well seasoned. So there's lots of seasonings here without adding extra. But, you know, food is, is all a matter of personal preference. So you would mix it. You would taste it. If, it, if it's what you want, you go with it. If you feel like you need to tweak it, then you tweak. Um, but I'm going to uh, go with those things and mix this up some more. What advice do you have for people with, I find that it's very easy, or at least it was easy for me to eliminate sugar because we had fruit and dates and oil. You have things like, you know, nut seeds and avocado if you need the fat, but people seem to struggle the most with salt. Would you, might, would you agree that that seems to be, at least for the Ooh. people I've met the hardest? Yes, indeed. I do agree with that. And if you're like me, it's one of the hardest ones to replace. You know, I always felt that the most empowering thing when you're trying to transition away from sugar or, or refined wheat um, is, to, is to know how to make um, a substitute. And that's what my page is all about, showing you that, okay, well, you're not eating sugar, but let's use these dates and we're still going to make those chocolate chip cookies or we're still going to make whatever. Salt's a tough one, particularly for me, because I eat nutritional yeast, but it has to be certified organic. If it's not, then I don't eat it. And there's only one company I know of that does that. Um, but my point is, I was using a salt substitute that Dr. Greger recommends, and then I realized it had nutritional yeast and it wasn't organic. So I said, that's a no-go. Um, and so um, my, my go around for salt is to use coconut aminos and to use miso paste. Um, and so that's what I do to add salt to dishes. But as far as a topical, um, that, that's a tough one. You know, for me, I, I was determined. And so I did it until my taste buds recalibrated and I didn't need that salt anymore. And as I said, I'll make like some bacon mushroom using the coconut aminos, and that has a salty flavor. Nowhere near the sodium that table salt would have, but I still get a little bit of saltiness in there. Uh, but for other people, I would say ratchet it down, put a little less, a little less, a little less, and try to work in the coconut aminos and the miso. Uh, how long did it take for you to experience food still tasty without tasting good without salt? Oof. It was it was tough. Um, um, it, it, it was not tough, tough. For me, it was probably a couple of weeks. But again, remember, my, my palate is already adjusted because I eat my, mostly fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. I eat a salad every day, et cetera. Um, and so for me, I'm sure it was a lot quick because salt, um, Chef AJ, was the last thing that I said no to, right? Because I thought, okay, 
uh, they recommend a thousand milligrams of sodium per day or less if you have, um, you know, if you're a prehypertensive, if you have high blood pressure, then they recommend a thousand milligrams um, or less a day. So I said, I'll just do that. And then I'm within the safe range. But then I heard Dr. Gregor and Dr. Furman both say, look, it's not just about that. It's what it does to your endothelial lining on your, on your cells. And so it's not just about high blood pressure. Salt is a problem, not to mention when you eat more salt, you're going to urinate more and you're going to take out other um, nutrients and other electrolytes and other minerals that you need. And so, you know, I've always been someone who really responds to facts. And so when I heard that, I was like, okay, all right, I got to get rid of this some way. And so then I tried Dr. Gregor's thing. Can't do that because the nutritional yeast are not organic. And then that's when I kind of gravitated to the miso and the... Um, coconut aminos but it took some getting used to because i was used to having the salt in my hummus and all my quinoa you know and it was it, it was tough at first but now i use the bacon and the salt from that the bacon mushroom bacon and the salt from that to create that taste nice nice you know it's funny, you, you said that this wasn't one of the most popular recipes on your social media but what is out of curiosity well, well, now I want to I want to restate that then if I said that because it's super pop. It's my most popular recipe, excuse me, in the context of the response that I get from it. But what I'm saying is, this is my loaf bread, my flat breads. You know, because I, I don't use wheat, so I made some flat breads using just oats and water. Of course, the oats have to be certified glycemic free; they have to be organic. But just using just oats and water. Um, I've made a flat bread using almond flour and water. I got one coming up with tiger nut. I've got one coming. So, and then I've made loaf bread uh, that was wheat free and oil free. And those uh, four or five, and then I made some, <laughs> some chickpea chocolate chip cookies where, you know, I, I use chickpeas and some nut butter and some chocolate chips. And I made those and those all have, you know, like almost 2 million or 2 million views or something. They're, they're off the charts as far as the other recipes. But as far as response and durability and consistency and people just love the veggie ground would be number one in that regard as far as response. So it's very popular. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love things. So, so I've set my veggie. So do I. I've set this aside, right? That's my feeling. And um, one thing I'm going to do is top these pasta rolls with, with cheese sauce. So I'm going to make my cheese sauce right now. And to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to use some cannellini beans, some sunflower seeds, some nutritional yeast and some lemon juice. So this is what I'm using. Now, again, I'm salt free, so I'm not eating salt. Um, if someone were gonna make this particular recipe and this recipe is on my IG, if you were gonna make this particular recipe, you could add salt and you could add garlic again. Always, one of my sayings is there are no rules, right? It's eating, it's what you like. Um, but I'm giving you the base of the recipe. You can take it as is, or you can tweak it to what you, you know, your particular taste, but this is what I go with. So, um, so I'm going to make this sauce here. And another, this is another example, Chef AJ, where you said your friend, I forget her name, but you said your friend uh, doesn't eat nuts. Mm -hmm. and so, she's um, allergic. Again, she's allergic. I get, yeah. I get, yes, I get it. That is, is, is one of the most common allergies there is. Um, and I've learned that from doing my page. I get so many people saying, do you have a nut-free version? Do you have a nut-free version? So this is one of the examples of something that I've already posted um, a cheese sauce on my on my page, but I use cashews. I use cashews a lot because it's just, you know, the only nut that really creates that creaminess to the degree that it does. But so many people are allergic to nuts. This is my answer to that. This is a nut-free version of that same cheese sauce that I'm making today. Nice. So now let's um, let's look at the cheese. So I blended the cheese really nice, the cheese sauce. Uh, this is what it looks like. And I'm just going to set this aside also. Um, and now um, I'm going to do my uh, my pasta noodles. So I'm going to take my, my pasta. Now, again, um, I don't eat any refined wheat. Um, so the, when, I, when I make pasta, it's always a bean pasta. Um, so sometimes, or lentil, bean or lentil pasta which is what this is. This is a, a, a bean pasta. And so I'm gonna start here and it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna put my, uh, my filling in it. Okay, and then 
And just a little bit of cheese sauce inside, just a little. So I'm going to be topping it with to tomato sauce and cheese sauce also. So I'm just putting just a little bit inside of the sauce here. Um, and then it's simple. You just roll it up like so. And um, and that's one, one roll right there. I'm going to do a few of these. <clears throat> Those are beautiful. And they're so tasty, you know, because so you got a lot of flavors going on here with the veggie ground being so flavorful itself and then adding the cheese sauce, the lentils, the spinach, you know, um, these are uh, these are really nice. Really like them. And it's simple, you know, Chef AJ, the, the veggie ground for people who follow me, um, you know, I tell them keep keep veggie ground on hand. And and again, the beautiful thing is you make a batch and it lasts for so long. I mean, you, you have like seven different meals in there. So you know, you're ready to make some some roll ups, some pasta roll. You just break it out and and you got it. Um, so uh, yeah, so in that way, it's easy. If you make your veggie ground ahead of time, these aren't just uh, delicious, but they're easy to make. Doesn't take a lot of time. Do you ever freeze those? Or do you only freeze the the veggie crumbles? Only the only the veggie ground. I, I've never done that. I'm sure you could, um, but but I haven't um, done that. I'm going to do one more. Do people say to you, why don't you open a restaurant? <laughs> I hear that all the time. I know, and they, I, they and think my like it's is, easy. You know, they think, oh, it's just so easy, right? Exactly. You know, and I usually equate, you know, opening a restaurant with trying to make money. And that's not really my thing. And now, again, now I, I've had a restaurant, so I don't want people to think, oh, what does he mean? You don't have to be trying to make money. I, I had a pretzel and coffee shop at one time that I opened years ago. Um, so I'm not against it. But for me right now, my whole motivation is just helping people. And uh, this social media thing is as reluctant as I was about trying it has shown me that that really is the best bridge to, to reach people, you know, social media. And so if I open a restaurant and I always tell people, I open a restaurant, you come to me, you eat, you go home, you go, man, that was good. I wish I could make that. Well, I'm the guy that takes care of that part, right? You go to a restaurant, you come home, find me, and I'll show you how to make whatever it is you're making and empower you to make it yourself and probably make it healthier. So that's my niche, and I'm very comfortable with that. So I have no ambition whatsoever to open a restaurant. Yeah, it's hard work. I worked in a restaurant for many years. Not that other jobs aren't hard. Yes. Different kind of hard. No, I hear you. I've, I've, been, I've been there. Um, so I'm going to put these in this dish, but before I do, I'm going to put some tomato paste at the bottom because I find that, that uh, tomato sauce, excuse me, at the bottom because I find that that, you know, kind of helps it from, keeps it from sticking. Uh, so I'm going to just lightly put some tomato sauce. Again, this isn't for flavor, although it'll do some of that too, but it's primarily just to have a, you know, a little liquid at the bottom to uh, somewhat keep them from sticking. So I'll do that. Um, and then I'm going to set this here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna um, put these here. Mm 
Okay. So that's that. And now I'm going to put a little, <clears throat> I'm going to put a little tomato sauce over top of these. Just to, And I assume you made your own tomato sauce. <laughs> I did indeed. Yep. I did indeed. The only way that I do it. Yeah. Love it. So I'm just going to dress these up with some tomato sauce first. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then last step uh, before getting them in the oven is to uh, put just a little more cheese sauce. That looks positively decadent. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a pretty simplistic dish. It's it's not that complicated. I I do make some things that um are more involved, you know, um, but uh, but I agree. It's a, it's a simplistic beauty, but but nonetheless, it, it does look great. I know you've done a few presentations for Sharon's group, Eat Well, Stay Well. What what recipes did her group get to see you make? Um, the most recent two, I did my um, deal ranch burger. I was keeping it simple. Um, and then um, before that, I did a salad with um, with no chicken mushrooms. So it was a it was a bowl, basically a salad on a on a bed of quinoa. And then I had some vegetables and some strawberries. And then I sautéed uh, some mushrooms um, in in water and 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 uh, broth. And then um, and put those on with it and uh and then made my uh, deal ranch sauce for them also to go over it deal d-e-a-l d-i-l-l -L. oh deal sorry i don't hear very well because I, yes, yes. I thought you said deal <laughs> a, well no i you know what i've got dr deal on my mind because he just i thought you said deal oh. dr dr hans deal dill ranch okay got it i gotta get my right mm -hmm. are you more of a savory guy okay or <clears throat> Savory or or sweet. sweet? What if you had to pick savory or sweet? Which are you? Oh, if I had to pick, well, when you say that, that makes me feel like if I pick savory, then I have no more desserts to eat. So, <laughs> so, so I think if, if you pick, need the con yeah. context, go ahead. No, I was gonna say if you pick sweet, you can never have. No, I, I mean, you know, it's, I just said that because I used to be such a sugar addict, but now, like, given a choice, it's not that I don't enjoy dessert, but I seem to like savory dishes a little bit more. Not not a lot more. But a little bit mm -hmm. more you know i mean i like a i like a balance I, I, i'd hate to choose if i had to choose i would probably go savory probably um just because i don't eat a lot of sugar in comparison to most people so i guess i could do better you know if i had to do, do one or the other doing the savory um <clears throat> still make great stuff like this um so that's that so so those would go into the oven and um and then when you break them out um so again i mean this is the end result, okay? And these are just some that I cooked earlier. So they didn't just come out of the oven. So they all have that beautiful, you know, uh, sparkly, moist look. But I just wanted to be able to, because I know we have in the confines of time here, I wanted to be able to show people what it looks like when it's cooked. And so I, I made these earlier. And so, um, you know, you can see pretty much the same thing. Uh, we go from this uh, uncooked to this once we cook. And you want to cook it at about 350, 350 for 15, 20 minutes. Check it out for 15, 20 minutes. See what you got. Um, and that's that. It's as simple as that to make this beautiful, uh, you know, stuffed pasta dish. Jeez, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that is the savory. Um, now, I thought I'd do a, a, a burger because that's a classic, right? Everybody loves a good burger, I always say, um, including me. Um, and to make these into veggie burgers, people often ask me, do I have to add anything to it to make it into a burger? Will it hold up well? 
And so, um, so I'm going to make a burger so you can see exactly the way I do it. Um, of course, we're starting with the ever versatile veggie ground again. And I'm just going to make one burger. Um, so I don't need a whole lot. In fact, that's probably in there. That's probably yeah. Don't have to use it all. People are mentioning. Okay, and then to. Sorry. I was just saying, people are, are wondering if you could share what kind of exercise you enjoy doing because you look very fit. Oh, well, uh, thank you to whoever said that. <clears throat> and um, I often tell people uh, your body composition is probably, you know, it's hard to say from individual to individual, but if you, it, what I'm saying is this, I'm saying it awkwardly, but what I want to say before I tell you what exercises I do is that I used to exercise all the time when I was pre-diabetic. I used to exercise all the time when I was hypertensive, pre-hypertensive. And so my point is exercise is great as a supplement to a good diet, right? And so eating a healthy food is number one. That trims you down in and of itself. Um, and then adding the muscle and adding the, the contour, you know, that's when you get in the gym. And so I have a room in my house that's dedicated as, as my gym. And I have a pull-up bar there and I have a treadmill and I have a bench press and I have a lot of dumbbells. Um, and so I, I use those. I, I work out right here at home and I do pull-ups and I do dips and I do push-ups and I do sit-ups and I walk on a treadmill and then I run around town. I go out, um, you know, and I do sprints. So I'm doing sprints, I'm running, I'm lifting weights. I don't, I don't go at it hard though. When I was young, I had the mentality that I wanted to be big. I wanted my muscles to be big and just look, you know, that, that's not necessarily good for your muscles are metabolically expensive. And so for your body to maintain that extra muscle mass, it's a detriment in my opinion. And so I want to be lean and fit and muscular. And so um, I do short sessions. Uh, another thing, when you lift weights, you're creating, um, um, uh, boy, uh, can't think of the name of it right now. Oh, uh, boy. Anyway, go back to that. But, when, but one thing you're doing is you're raising your cortisol level. So when you exercise, you're raising your cortisol level, you, which, you know, you need to do that. You need to, you need to stimulate. But I don't want to do it for too long. So what I'm getting at is my workout sessions never exceed 45 minutes to an hour and a half. That's as much as I do. Some people go in the gym all day and they do it. If it's your thing, it's your thing. But as far as what I do, I exercise daily. I haven't missed a day in over 100 and probably 20 or 30 days without running or lifting weights because I alternate, right? I lift and run and the next day I just run and sprint. And I lift weights and I jog and then I sprint and I jog. And I just alternate those every day. And I haven't missed a day in probably 120, 130 days. So it's very important to me. I stay consistent, um, but I don't overdo it at the same time. As far as, you know, duration, frequency all the time, duration, I minimize it, you know, keep me from um, causing problems. Free radicals. Free <laughs> radicals is what I was trying to think of. When you're, actually, when you're exercising, your body is producing free radicals, right? So, um, so yeah. So, anyway, so that's why I keep my sessions um, short. Nice. Well, you're very dedicated. Um, so to... You seem, seem like you're very dedicated and committed to this lifestyle. Well, I am. And I tell people all the time, at first it's work. And at first it takes that word that I don't like to use. It takes discipline because I think discipline has a negative connotation in the, in the context of talking about eating healthy and but you got to be disciplined. You got to be, di it just makes it sound like it's a struggle. And I like to say, you got to be focused, right? You got to be focused. And so for me, um, the focus creates the discipline, but it's just focus. But after a while, and I'm sure you know this, it becomes a way of life. And now if I didn't exercise for two days, it bothers me. You, you follow me? Whereas before I had to drag myself in there to lift those weights or to go running. Now, if I don't do it, I'm like, man, I didn't run. I didn't lift. I got to get in there. Um, so, so now it's just a way of life and, and it's, uh, it's a necessity. It's not, it's not, it doesn't take discipline. It doesn't take any of that. It's, it's a way of life. And I love it. I, I love what I do. Yeah, well, it shows. So to this veggie ground, thank you. Thank you. To the veggie ground, I'm going to add some chickpea flour. And I would say organic to things, but I, everything I use is organic. That's just my personal preference. Um, this is some ground flax. And that just adds some fat and some, and some flavor uh, to this. Um, and then I'm going to add some garlic powder. And again, the veggie ground itself is already flavored and seasoned. So, you know, you, you know but people have different, you know, tastes. So, that's what I add. Maybe you want to add more or less. Again, I don't eat salt, so I'm not adding that, but you could. And I'm just going to mix it up <clears throat> to saturate it really well. Mm. 
when you cook for yourself, do you batch cook at all? When I cook for myself, do I batch cook? Well, see, here's the thing, Chef AJ. I don't, I don't cook for myself, right? Uh, well, well, no, no. Let me say yes to that. Let me say yes to that because, again, what I eat is the same thing. Excuse me, Monday through Friday. But part of my meal um, is eating quinoa and eating millet. So, though, and, and hummus. Um, so, if I'm eating quinoa and beans that week or millet and beans that week, I'll cook it all in one day and I'll put it in those same glass con containers I told you about, right? Um, and then the same thing with my hummus. I'll, I'll make the hummus in one big batch and I'll put it in those containers I was talking about and then I'll eat it throughout the week. But cooking like this, I really don't do uh, unless it's for my IG. Again, I'd be happy eating a salad every day, but because I have this page now, um, I'm required to eat chocolate pie. So um, so I do, um, but, 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 but if I weren't, then no, I wouldn't be doing any batch cooking at all, just, just the quinoa and the hummus ahead of time. Okay, so I think I got this where I want it. I'm gonna move this to here. And I've got my burner here. I'm gonna get it going. Ah, uh, you know what? Let me, let me hold off on this. Let me get there. Let me get this here. Got my cast iron skillet here. Hands are going to get dirty. Out of the process. And I'm just going to shake this <clears throat> into a burger. Nothing, uh, nothing fancy about this. Just making a burger. All right. I'm going to put that here. That's a big burger. I'm good with that. It worked. Um, get that going. When I, I make burgers, you know, out of things like, you know, sweet potatoes or beans or whatever. And I always freeze them after cooking. For people that wanted to freeze these, do you recommend freezing the batter before cooking or after cooking? Um, I... Now you're saying it specifically with burgers or just the veggie ground? And what, do you, what do you mean by that? Either. Like if you were the people, because people love making burgers and I like having them on hand. I just take them out of my freezer and defrost them. But some, people always ask me, well, do you freeze them before or after cooking? And I personally do it after, but I don't see why you couldn't freeze a burger before. Oh, absolutely. If I were going to do what I would do before, personally, okay. um, you don't have to do it that way, but, but that's the way I would do it. Um, but, but, you know, honestly, I don't, when I freeze it, I just freeze a batch of, of veggie ground. And if I know one of those batches is going to make burgers, I'll do a little less because it's just me eating it. So, you know, I don't need a whole lot. So I'll just freeze a little bit, but you could certainly, you know, um, create your, your burgers and then freeze them uncooked or cooked. I would personally do them uncooked and then, and then cook them after the fact, but personal preference. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay, um, and where, oh, here's my spatula. Okay, so that's gonna take a little time to get going and get cooking. Ooh, maybe not. And what kind of pan are you using? It's, it's, a, it's a cast iron pre-season pan. Now, I really get into this. I made a post about um, cookware on my uh, Instagram. And the thing that I was uh, mentioning is that you know, the ceramic cookware, I don't, I don't mess with anymore. I thought I had a green pan that was clean and free of chemicals, felt real good about it, using it, eating, and then they got a lawsuit. Someone sued them and it was found that they had levels of this and levels of that that exceeded this. I was like, okay, I'm done with that. So I did a lot of research and I came up with the pan that I use now. Um, it's called a Stargazer, cast iron, pre-season cast iron pan. So now I don't cook with oil, but this pan was pre-seasoned with a little bit of oil. And, and frankly, I do still season my cast iron with oil. So I'm, I'm willing to do that. I don't cook with it. I don't eat it. But I certainly want to take care of my pan. And that's the best way to do it. Um, and so that's what I do. But it's a stargazer cast iron pan. And it's been independently tested to have lower levels of all the chemicals that could be a problem. And so that's why I use this particular. Now, it's expensive. Uh, it is very expensive, you know, as pans go. Uh, but for me, it's worth it. You buy it once. You got it forever. So. Okay, I'm kind of babysitting this burger. Um, the next thing I'm going to do um, is go ahead and get my uh, get my bread dressed up here. 
And um, oh, oh, and I want to tell you, Chef AJ, I know you don't you don't eat bread. I don't eat bread unless I have to take one for the team for IG. Um, but one thing that I did is I told you I made that loaf bread and it was really popular. But so many people ask me, hey, can you make buns that way? Um, and that was probably six months ago. And so I said, you know what? I got to make a bun. And I made this bun. Um, I made this bun. I'm very happy. No oil, no wheat, no refined sugar, no rice. That's my mantra. And that applies here. Um, this is made with millet, actually. This is a, a, a bun that's made with millet. Um, I'm, I'm, I have that posted on my uh, YouTube channel. So if someone wanted to see how to make this bun, they can go to my YouTube and scroll and see the burger bun and look at it step for step. It's not even difficult. And uh, man, you, you don't get any healthier than that, in my opinion. Um, that's neat. I just yeah, I love that. I, mean, I, I, found found a, yeah. I just found a bread called Pacha. I had the founder on the show and I you did taste it. It was delicious. It had two ingredients, but one of them was salt. It was buckwheat and salt. And I said to her, I said, make one without salt, you know, because the salt was in there, not because it did anything, but because people don't generally buy things without salt. That's right. That's right. And and I got to tell you that um, before I made my own, um, if I, you know, needed bread for whatever reason here and there, I was comfortable and still would be um, eating the Ezekiel brand. Now they have a low sodium. They don't have a no sodium, but they do have a low sodium and it's whole grains. I mean, it's whole grains and it's cooked at a low temperature to, to maintain the enzymes. And so it's, a, it's an excellent bread. If you have to buy a store ball bread, in my opinion, the best bread you can buy out of the store is the Ezekiel. But if you want to notch it up a bit, take it to the next level and make your own, which is my slogan. Um, you know, you can do that too. Check out my YouTube. Um, yep. well, and, and, and your, YouTube and channel, on... your YouTube channel, your Instagram links are all in the show notes below. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Hopefully people will check it out. Um, and now I am putting um, some ranch sauce on the, on the buns here. And, and this I made earlier and uh, it's nut free also. And delicious. A lot of people love this one. So I'm putting a generous amount of, uh, of ranch sauce on there. Something else I want to tell you about, Chef AJ, is this cheese. Okay. Guess what this is? Healthy vegan cheese. Guess what it has? No oil, no wheat, no refined sugar, no rice. I'm very proud of this. I might be most proud of this. Um, it took some trial and error, um, but here it is. And this recipe is also on my YouTube channel. And look at this. I mean, it cuts like cheese, it looks like cheese. Um, it melts well. I won't say it melts just like cheese, but it melts well. In fact, um, on uh, YouTube, I'm putting it on a, on a burger, a veggie burger, and, uh, and I melt the cheese so you can see it melted. But I'm, I'm telling you, it tastes good. Um, now, some salt is required to make this. So if you're salt-free, I haven't made a salt-free version. Um, I assume it's possible, but that's not what this is. Uh, but other than the salt, it, it, it meets all of my, um, all of my oh, requirements yeah. as far as what I consider to be healthy vegan. So I'm loving this. I'm loving this cheese. Is is that recipe and, um, either on your uh, YouTube or is that recipe available either on your YouTube, Instagram, or your upcoming app? Well, it will definitely be on the app. Everything's going to be on the app. And it's also on YouTube right now. The step for step for how to make this. I have not put it on IG yet. Some things I put on IG first and then I move them to YouTube and then vice versa. This particular recipe, in fact, both of these, the uh, the bun as well as the cheese, are both on my YouTube right now which is healthy vegan eating, no spaces. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this, this is like, this is wonderful. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, it's, it's cheese. It's cheese. It's just not, you know, it's just, it's just our kind of cheese, right? It, it's not coming from an animal. I just love it. Um, okay. So I've got my bun dressed up. I'm going to put a little, um, put a little lettuce on here too. I'm going to put a little lettuce on this burger like so. And then I'm going to, and normally I would cook this a little longer, but I'm going to take it off now in the interest of time. Um, and that cheese is on there. It didn't let it melt, but that's okay. I kind of like my cheese thick. And I, and I feel like I've always, even when I eat regular cheese, I am always like my cheese to be cut thick and, and just partially melted. I just feel like you got the flavor more. And the same thing applies here. So I cut it thick. I melted a little bit. On, on my cheese um, video, though, you'll see I melted it really well. But here I'm just melting a little bit. I'm going to throw a couple of Roma tomato slices on here. I'm not nightshade sensitive. Um, I don't worry about lectins. Um, so I'm going to put my, my tomato on here and top it off. And there you have it, the classic of veggie burger. I mean, your food looks so delicious. And it's just, it's so familiar for people that are, you know, thinking that 
the vegan or plant-based diet is weird. You, you made, you know, lasagna and burgers basically. Yes. Yes. And, and that's just the beginning chef AJ, because I mean, I make chocolate chip cookies uh, that are healthy. I make chocolate cake. I make, um, you know, you, you name it and ice creams and drinks and, and all kind of thing, macaroni and cheese, cheese, um, that you would, the things that you would think you would not be able to indulge in if you gave up all the junk. Um, that's kind of my niche is showing people, look, you don't have to give up anything, um, as far as taste and flavor is concerned, um, to, to eat, um, to eat great food. So, um, that's, that's what I'm all about. Absolutely. No deprivation. Okay. And, and my last one. So that, no, not at all. Not, yeah. not, not deprived at all. So, um, so I did my savory dish with, with the pasta rolls. Uh, we did the classic with the burger. And then I want to go, um, for people like yourself and myself, uh, that don't eat bread, um, we can still in, enjoy this uh, veggie brown uh, as a taco. So I'm going to, I'm going to make it as a, um, as a roll taco. I'm going to roll it up in some red leaf lettuce um, here instead of bread or instead of anything like that. We're just going to use the, the lettuce leaf here. Now, again, it all starts with the most versatile of things, which is my um, veggie ground. So I'm going to take more veggie ground. What's the name of the cheese that you showed on your YouTube channel? I'm going to get that link and post it for people. What's the name? What's the name of it? Um, um, I just called it. Um, well, I started everything with vegan. I just put vegan cheese, oil free, um, uh, wheat free, something like that, oil free. I'll, I'll find it, and put it. But in you know, I'm, I'm 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 relatively new. So if you get to my page, I only have roughly 15, 16 cooking show videos. Um, so it won't, won't be hard to find. Mm -hmm. There's one that's called Simple Vegan Ricotta Cheese Oil Free. Um, that's not it. Um, I, I do have that. Um, that's made with cashews, though. That that's not what this is. Um, I can let you know the name of it. Um, okay. I, I can't remember exactly how I titled it, but I'll let you know. And, right. Um, we can always can we can always add it to the show notes. Okay. Absolutely, that'd be great. So this is okay. our final um, so, demonstration. This is our final one, and I'm starting with my veggie ground again. And uh, I'm going to add some seasoning. Um, again, if you want to see the recipe and see exactly what I'm putting in it, um, this one uh, is on my IG. And I'm just going to mix that in <clears throat> nice and easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the uh, veggie ground is already cooked, obviously, but it's, it's just slant. Um, so this one's super easy is what I'm getting at. Once you have your veggie ground thawed, I mean, all you need is some lettuce. Um, let me go ahead and make my, uh, I'm going to put some guac on this one too. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my, or at least some smash avocado. Technically it would be guacamole, but it would be some smash avocado. So I'm going go to go ahead and get that ready. <laughs> and what spoon will I use for that? Yeah. Yeah. Stuff on it. It's all right. <laughs> work. Do you eat, do you eat avocado, Chef? I don't. Not really. I just I don't do as well with the fats, but I do. If I'm going to eat a fat, I'd rather eat avocado. Let me tell you than anything like a nut or a seed. It's because it's so creamy and delicious. I'm with you, and you know, um, I used to um, I used to eat avocados in my salad every day, uh, but uh, when I was a little more um, uh, mindful about the fat myself, I stopped eating them too. Um, and so I, I I don't eat any avocado, but like you, I'm I'm, I'm not opposed to it. If you're going to eat fat, it should be healthy. And I do eat fat. Let me make that clear. I, I eat nuts and seeds every single day. It's a modest amount, but I do eat them. Um, but uh, that that's uh, my source of fat. Probably ninety percent of the time is nuts and seeds. Avocados I, I don't do unless again I'm taking one for the team and I'm making something that I'm posting. Or in this context, like now, I'm going to have to eat this because I'm not going to throw it away. That's for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to smash a little avocado, nothing to that. Um, now let's make these wraps. And it's really simple. Okay. Okay. Oh, 
Das machen wir so gerne. Ja. And you know, I was a person that <clears throat> back when I ate bread, I remember someone saying to me, you shouldn't eat bread. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, how, how do I have a meal without eating bread? What if I want a sandwich? What if I want whatever? I have to have bread. <clears throat> I literally could not see how you could eat without bread. And I'm telling you, it, you know, no one is for someone who hasn't tried it, it might sound a little off, but this is delicious. Putting sandwiches uh, uh, on on wraps, on lettuce wraps, is absolutely delicious um, w without the bread. So I'm going to top that um, with some uh, red onion. And I like to put the red onion um, and even the tomatoes on before the guac, because I found one thing with these type of sandwiches, when you go to pick them up, they can be a little flimsy. So you got to be very deliberate about eating a sandwich like this. And I found that if I put the guac on top, it kind of helps the other things stay. And so I put the smaller things like this um, <clears throat> beneath the smash avocado. I keep saying guac, beneath the smash avocado. And so that's that. And then I'm going to put my smash avocado on here. Your food is so pretty, too. Thank you. I mean, that's important. You know, I, uh, I, I agree. In fact, I have a saying. I've got a lot of sayings on it. I've got a saying that we take our first bite with our eyes. And I didn't make, I mean, you know, people have already said some something along those lines. But that's just my way to my phrase. We take our first bite with our eyes. And so I think that the presentation is key. You know, particularly for someone who's transitioning, again, if you if you think you like something and if it looks good, you know, even if you're not accustomed to it, you're more, you know, it's more inviting and you're more likely to uh, to give it a try. So it's important to me that the food looks good. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do The last thing I'm going to do is put some uh, chipotle uh, seasoning on it, okay? I'm just going to sprinkle that over, and um, that gives it a little kick, a little taste, and it looks good because it's red on red. Um, and so that's that. And 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 the uh, the theme for this one, again, Chef AJ, for this particular uh, lettuce wrap, the theme was uh, simplicity and health, right? This is a super healthy uh, dish. And, and, and assuming you have your veggie ground already on hand, it, you know, it doesn't get any simpler than that. You can't get any simpler than that. So now I want to bring everything back out here um, and just show, you know, just a few of the things that um, you can make with this delicious and remember, super healthy veggie ground. Um, everything from savory to the classic to the healthy simplicity of lettuce wraps. If you got your veggie ground on hand, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Uh, lasagna, burritos, uh, uh, give me more, tacos, uh, any, anything you can name, anything that you would need uh, beef for, um, veggie ground is that answer. And um, and that's why I guess it's my most popular recipe, even to myself. Love it. Oh, wow. Javant, you're very talented. I can see why Sharon is such a fan. I am too now. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you because you are Chef AJ and you are someone, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm not, I don't get into all the star stuff. You're a person, yeah. I'm a person, but I've watched you interview all my favorite people. And for me, when I watched it, <laughs> when I watched this back and it's not Dr. Furman and it's not Dr. McDougal and it's not Dr. Gregor, it's Javon. I know. Whoa. And Chef AJ. And Chef AJ. Oh, come on now. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And please come back anytime. You just, you're very, very talented in the kitchen. I would love to ask me and I'm here. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous guest.